What's up guys, Aeneas here. It's Monday again, so you know what that means. Time for another Monday meta update. And we've got quite a bit of surprise for you today. The meta is definitely changing and we've got some surprising results in some tournaments that happened over the weekend. Also, some really cool decks and I'll give you my thoughts on the meta and how you can attack it. Uh, besides that, there's also some cool news about MTG. So yeah, let's get into it. Alrighty, so to start off, let's look at the standard meta. This is standard best of one from Diamond to Mythic. And it's uh, just, this is the current standard for today. So today's popularity is still aggro, is still the top. Zori Soldier, Mono Red Burn, Mono Red Aggro. Uh, we do see a little bit of control creeping in here. Azori's Control and Esper Control are both uh, getting more popular. Of course, there's the Mono White deck. And even uh, some new decks like Golgari Fight and the Selesnya Toxic deck, which has been around for a little bit now. Uh, so yeah, there's some new decks. People are trying out new things. And um, so far, based on the average, they're they're doing okay. Um, so yeah, like Soldiers is still obviously very good. Um, it's down to 58%. Was 60, 58% today. And Mono Red, 55 Toxic is, is almost 55, uh, and then the control decks are sitting just barely above 50%, which is okay on average, because some people are just not as good at piloting the control lists, uh, and some people are better, and so usually it averages out pretty close to 50. Okay, um, so that is today's meta. If we look at the tier list, this is from a week's of, uh, one week of time for best of one. And uh, we see Soldiers still number one. Uh, again, it's not at 60% this week, so it's going down a little bit. Um, we have a surprising new contender, Naya Humans, which uh, kind of popped up out of nowhere, but it was popular back um, maybe two sets ago because of Halana and Elena. And uh, it looks like it's making a comeback. People are taking the mono white list, adding in. Uh, mostly Halana and Elena and maybe a few red cards and uh, making a, a pretty strong Naya humans deck. So yeah, it's doing surprisingly well and maybe a contender for one of the new best decks. Um, I think just because it's a little bit bigger, a little bit maybe greedier than the aggro lists, but it's a lot of value nonetheless. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, Mono White, still very solid choice. And tier two, Two is still very strong. Uh, Selesnya Toxic is definitely doing a lot better. People have kind of found like a more optimal build for it, uh, using a lot more value cards and having the Toxic be kind of a secondary win condition, I would say. Something you still have to worry about when you play against it, but it's not like the only way it wins. Um, and then Gruel, I, we saw before that it was starting to get pretty good. I think it was about a 54% win rate before. Moving up to 56, so people have kind of optimized it even more. They're doing better with it, they know how to pilot it. And uh, yeah, it's taking on some of these other aggro decks. Uh, Mono Red still very solid, though I think it did have a little bit of a dip from the last week. I believe it was 58% uh, in the last week's meta. And now it's gone down to about 55, 56%. And um, closely behind that, we got some Mono Black, some Grixis. Um, enchantment somehow is coming up, um, and then a few of the like uh, black, white, or Orzhov control decks. So uh, yeah, the meta is getting more diverse. Uh, I think the early weeks people were trying stuff out, so aggro was really preying upon that. But now that people have kind of found some more mid-range-ish shells, they're able to compete against the aggro decks, and also control has been able to kind of prey upon the fact that everyone's playing mostly the same decks so you can kind of tune your deck to beat those decks so yeah pretty cool stuff glad to see that it's shifting and it's not just stale already um let's take a look at best of three though so in best of three uh we see kind of a similar but there are some mid-range and control decks which are doing well uh grixis is always number one in best of three uh, for some reason, but it's not always performing the best. Uh, actually, Mono Red somehow is doing the best in Best of Three. Esper Legends 
pretty much always second place slot, still second place slot, um, but still doing very strongly. Uh, soldiers bumped down to third place from first place before. Uh, and then, yeah, this is pretty normal. Rakdos and Grixis in the next few spots. So, best of three, not looking a whole lot different. Um, I guess Esper Legends and Mono Red stonks went up. Seems like people have been making some improvements on that and doing better. So, if those are your decks of choice, then you'll be happy to see that. All right. Um, and then in the overall tier list, Model Red is first in best of three. Zora Soldier second. Grixis third. Gruel Aggro is coming up uh, as a close fourth. And then pretty normal, the Mono White rid mid range with the reanimation and stuff uh, is right after that. Mono Black with the Invoke Despair. Uh, and then poor old John is still not doing super great. Maybe John is not the way to go, or else nobody's found the right list for it yet. But it's not doing great. Uh, but yeah, this is only a week's a week of data, so take it with a grain of salt. This isn't the be all end all, but it just kind of shows you a little bit of what's doing well so far um, with a lot of data match data sets. Okay, and I wanted to change things up a little bit because I felt like there's a little bit we're missing out on the meta when I just show you the the you know the matches that have like two thousand games, so. I wanted to look at some of the decks that are doing well, even in the smaller sample size. Uh, so we're looking at standard best of one, Diamond to Mythic, the last week. And this is ones that have 100 games or more. And we can see that Soldiers is still very good, of course. Mono White is still very good. Uh, but we see some interesting things coming up. Esper Control uh, is actually the third best deck, if we're just looking at the smaller sample size. And that is very interesting because that is something I have been noticing as well, is that Esper has been doing very well for me. And not Esper midrange, but rather Esper control. So I think there is a very good likelihood that we see the format kind of shift into this very heavy aggro part and very heavy control part. And what does that control deck look like? don't know yet, but it, it reminds me a lot of the standard we had. Um... I guess there may be two other times it happened. War of the Spark kind of era where we had a bunch of Planeswalkers that were good. So people could make like the Super Friends kind of decks. Uh, I can see that kind of working out in this format. And also back in the Dominaria, uh, Return to Dominaria, I think it was. Hopefully that's the right set. Uh, but it's the one where we had T Teferi 5 who was very good. And we had Mono Red was also very strong at that time. And Mono White was very strong at that time. So we had a very heavy aggro side of things and a very heavy control side of things. And I think it made for a very fun format, if I'm being honest. Because, um, you know, games were very fast. People were e either playing, you know, the aggro decks against control or aggro against aggro. Both of those cases was very fast matchup. Once in a while, you would get a control v control match, and those took very, very long, like an hour sometimes. Uh, but it was very interesting, and your decisions really mattered. And I think, uh, personally, that was my favorite format we've had uh, for a long time. And War of the Spark, maybe my second favorite format. So I think it's kind of it seems to be going back in that direction because aggro is just so strong right now that. Uh, Basically, every deck is an aggro deck. Even the mid-range decks are basically aggro decks. And so control is actually starting to become good again, which uh, I'm very excited about. So yeah, cool to see this. That can, as for control, has a list here. Um, also, surprisingly, Celestia Enchantments is making a comeback. I've seen, yeah, there's two lists here, both doing very well, 62% almost. Uh, and I think it's because of the aggro. It's just aggro is so strong. So now you can play these, like, kind of, I don't know, dirtily, a little bit more dirtily deck with a lot of life gain because uh, basically you just outlive the aggro and you outscale the aggro and you gain a bunch of life back. So it makes sense. Seems very cool. I love to see that people uh, thought to go back to Selesny Enchantments uh, during this meta. A lot of people would have probably just dismissed it. It's like, oh, it didn't work before. But because it's getting so aggro heavy, people can do this kind of stuff. So very cool. 
Um, and then yeah, I mentioned this Naya humans, same kind of thing. It's like people are just doing aggro, but a little bit bigger, a little bit greedier, and it's working out for them. So very cool to see that as well. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I mainly wanted to show. So pretty cool that people are still trying things out and in innovating things. Uh, all right, let's look at the tournament results. So this, uh, there were actually four pretty good sized tournaments this weekend. So that's very sweet. One of them was put on by Ash Lizzle called the Bestie Tournament. And uh, Grixis Midrange took this one down. Uh, nothing too special here. It's kind of a standard Grixis Midrange deck. But um, second place was a mono black deck, which had the uh, Phyrexian Obliterator in it. So uh, that was something we didn't see being too successful before. But again, maybe because aggro is just really, really becoming so dominant that people can put these Phyrexian Obliterators in their deck and do very well in a tournament because as soon as it comes down, pretty much every aggro deck just dies to it. So yeah, um, it's cool. I, I really like to see how people are adjusting to the format and finding ways to dominate in this aggro heavy meta. Um, also, we have an Orzhov midrange deck. Another thing that's been very cool lately is I see that uh, people are kind of realizing that, man, there's a lot of really good black and white planeswalkers and removal, and maybe we don't need to go for like a full control shell. Uh, maybe we don't need to go for like the Esper midrange creatures deck with a few planeswalkers in it. And so they're trying out some new stuff and doing pretty well. Kaya. Very strong, of course, very slow, but uh, if you get it down, you pretty much win the game. Varaska, also very good. Um, I think there were a few removal spells in black and white that were very solid, uh, but maybe not in this person's list. Stone Brain, I guess that's for Atraxa. Kind of interesting to see, but yeah, cool. Really like to see that people are trying new things. All right, moving on. We don't want to stay too long because we've got a lot to go through. Uh, Pizza Box Open, one of the always really big standard tournaments. Grixis Midrange took first place, but this is not normal Grixis. This is a Leer deck, uh, a Leer control deck, which kind of crazy. Uh, we haven't seen Leer in maybe three sets, and it's coming back for this person. I mean, they went 8-0 in a, like over a 100-person tournament. Very respectable. Um, they've got Invoke Despair, and they have the uh, Galvanic Iteration, so they're doing the the whole copy, Invoke Despair, and uh, basically just like destroy the opponent in one turn kind of thing. Um, yeah, maybe you're sick of it already, but I think it's cool that they're able to make it work and get first place. We also see that the five-color deck that Crokey's kind of popularized got second place. Atraxa, Kami War... Uh, ramping, getting a bunch of lands onto the battlefield. Uh, so yeah, that one's also very solid and doing well. And I think that's the most notable ones for this one. Uh, so yeah, let's go to the next one. Uh, this tournament taken down by Mardu Midrange. So that's another new deck, and again, that's using Kaya. Another person that is realizing that Kaya is a very strong planeswalker. And uh, also Rite of Oblivion, a uh, removal card that was not seeing a whole lot of play recently, but still very solid uh, and a reason to go into white and black. And what else was interesting in this deck? I remember seeing something else. Uh, hmm, maybe that's mostly it. But yeah, Mardu seems pretty solid. Maybe something that slept on a little bit. It was good last set. And once people find the right list, it could become pretty dominant again in this meta. Um, yeah, I think that's mostly it. The rest are kind of standard decks. All right, and then this last tournament was won by Azorius Control, uh, which I did not expect, but looking at it, it is a very pretty much solid Azorius Control deck. It, uh, it looks like they're also casting Atraxa, so they're splashing a few other colors just to get the Atraxa down. Uh, it's, it's not the Invoke Justice shenanigans or anything like that. And they have Blue Sun's Twilight, which is pretty cool. It's a card I tried to make work, but it couldn't quite get to work for me. Uh, but they got it to work for the 6-0. Uh, 
yeah, just a very solid Azorius control deck with a lot of the new good white and blue removals cards. So very sweet. Uh, definitely interested to try that one. It looks really cool. Um, and notably in this tournament, there's no Grixis in the top four. I mean, we got Mono White Planeswalkers. We got the five color Tempo Ramp thing again. Um, this one has Nissa in it, so a little bit different, but similar. Uh, yeah. So I think the meta is definitely shifting based on these results. We see uh, Mardu winning. We see Azorius winning. We see these five color decks winning. We see these mono white uh, Planeswalker decks winning. So the aggro is not winning. The Grixis is not winning. So the two really dominant decks in the last meta are not winning the tournaments. So that, that's saying something there. Um, so we might see a big shift in the meta where people start to realize this and they stop playing aggro on the ladder as well and move more towards these big decks. And we might have to adjust how we're playing based on that. But that hasn't happened yet. So we'll see. Okay, and then the last tournament I want to look at is uh, the standard uh, Ma Magic Online Standard Challenge. And uh, this one was pretty standard, like in terms of the, the decks, the good decks are won it. So Model Red took this one down. Um, Grixis, second place. And third place, Grixis. Fourth place was the, the Mono White Big Creatures deck. So this was a little bit more normal to what we were seeing before but the magic online tournament is not very large so uh take it with a grain of salt that like these are the results for that uh, i think the main outlier that we see is mono red won the tournament so mono red is very scary now even if the latter results seem to show that it's not quite as good as the other aggro decks uh, we can see that in best of three it is doing very solidly now, and people have found the right build and the, the right answers in the sideboard for things. So yeah, be careful. Mono, white, mono red is scary. Uh, I share the same sentiments with CGB that I just really hate losing to mono red. So it makes me feel sad when I see them winning these tournaments. But I gotta give props to them. I mean, they made a deck that was you know like maybe third or fourth best, maybe fifth best, and they tweaked it and they got it to win a tournament so very cool okay now the part you guys love uh the spicy brews on twitter so i've gone through all the terrible brews that people post on twitter and i found a few that people were having success with so let's look at those uh first one is by ec john john the words guy uh, it's his version of the toxic selesnia toxic the selesnia toxic deck and it's pretty similar to what we've seen. Uh, I think he has a little bit more protection spells and a little bit more of the cheap toxic creatures like Mer Convert, which I think is a little bit of a sleeper card that people haven't been using. Um, but if you ever played Elves in Historic, like the main reason that they're so good, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like the best deck in Historic, but Elves is a very respectable deck, and it's because they have so many mana dorks, and they have so many cards that like will draw you other cards when you play them. Uh, and of course, they have lords to buff their creatures, etc. But my point being is the Mer Convert, the fact that it's a toxic creature, comes down early, and it gives you mana is pretty huge. And I think that is something that John here was uh, playing with and found out and realized that uh, it made the deck better. So. Yeah, seems like a good improvement. I'm glad to see that it's working out. All right, uh, this was another deck that Elliot Dragon played with that I thought was just really cool idea. Uh, not sure how well it did overall. I mean, he, he said that it was doing well for him, but I don't have stats to know. But uh, pretty cool that they have the Spell Dancer into the Invoke Despair. So you can pretty easily get the combo where you double Invoke Despair um as early as like i guess it would be like turn five but still you get the spell dancer down you attack in it can't be blocked it gets the counter on it you kill something and proliferate and you could even copy your your removal spell if you want etc etc so pretty cool to see i think it's pretty interesting the whole like synergy that's going on here spell dancer with kaito works really well Spell Dancer with Invoke works well. 
Um, all the proliferate with your planeswalkers work well. So, just seems like a really solid idea and really cool to see Elliot try this deck out. So, yeah, if that's something that you, you like, I love Demir. So, if you also like Demir, might be something to try out. Okay, and then Schlop here got to Mythic uh, in pretty record fashion, 20 and 9. And this was uh, kind of similar to a deck that I played on my video, uh, the last video on my channel. The Jeskai Twilight deck. Uh, he, he calls it Standard Creativity. And I, I based my deck off of a version of this deck earlier that Schlop had made uh, and made my own tweaks to it. But he has made a lot of other tweaks as well, and they're very cool. Like the Wandering Mind is a very cool include in this deck. Um, having the two better reunions, I think, makes a lot of sense because you get your White Sun Twilight down and you just can instantly win in a lot of cases. Um, so, yeah, I really love to see these improvements. Makes a lot of sense and very cool. And yeah, I mean, obviously, got him to Mythic without you know, many losses, like 20 and 9 is very solid, so. Uh, I think this deck is a sleeper deck in the format. Like, when I was playing the one that I it was in my video, I was doing very, very well with it. Very little opposition. Like, basically, if you get to cast the White Sun's Twilight, you win the game. Basically, there's, yeah, that's it. So, you just have to survive until turn 7, and then, or whatever, and then win the game. So, seems very possible, and I think this is a very good deck. All right, the last one we're looking at... Uh, oh, sorry. The last thing I wanted to talk about is there's some new announcements for MTGA. Uh, they finally are adding in the default card for your lands, default land choice. So, uh, it's not out yet. I believe it's coming when the Alchemy set drops in just a few days. Um, uh, but very, very cool. This is something that's been requested a long time. So very cool to see that finally you can select your default lands. When you build your new deck, the default lands will get chosen for that. Uh, when you're playing limited, probably also as well, it'll use your default lands, etc. So very cool to see. They also have the default style choice for some of your cards. So if, you know, you have multiple versions of the same card, you can pick which one you like better and it will use that one. So both of those changes are coming up real soon. Uh, really happy about that. It's just a nice quality of life change that they finally got to do. So really cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, talking about the meta. So my thoughts on the meta. Uh, I think the meta is actually in a really good place right now. So wait, a few, maybe one or even two weeks ago, the meta was not in a good place and it felt very bad because uh, aggro was so dominant but if you only built your deck to beat aggro you were losing to a lot of other things as well um but i think just in the recent maybe last week just in the last week we saw that people realized you could get atraxa out quick enough to beat aggro like as soon as you get atraxa out they can't deal with the atraxa pretty much and it gets you life it has death touch it's got vigilance and it wins the game right on top of that it draws a bunch of cards so even if somehow they happen to have like an ossification or some removal that can deal with it you have an answer the very next turn to not lose so yeah those decks were also very very solid and i think that really pushed the the meta into a place where Mid-range could not exist anymore because you have the aggro that is so strong, Zori Soldiers, Mono Red, uh, even Mono White were just so strong. And the mid-range was doing okay, like uh, Esper, Grixis, those kind of decks. They're doing fine against the aggro decks. But as soon as the Atraxa decks started to pop up, it kind of pushes the mid-range decks out of things. So now in standard, basically what I see. Probably two thirds of the time you still face aggro, but every you know third game you face some big Atraxa reanimator or some just like really big over the top deck 
Um, sometimes even like a control E deck uh, that might just happen to have a track. So sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but we've kind of seen this split, right? Where it's you've got a lot of aggro, but then you have a lot of these really big over the top decks. Uh, and I think for people who like control, this is a very good thing because we can make all of our removal focused on these aggro decks. And then we just need a few cards that help deal with the tracks. So, so like a negate or two, uh, maybe a little bit of graveyard hate, maybe um, some other really big planeswalkers, which are value engines, so that even if they get the Atraxa down, it doesn't matter because we've already got our planeswalkers down getting value. And um, so, yeah, I think that makes it so that there really is a lot of diversity in the meta that is popping up now. Because um, I know a lot of people think when mid-range is good, like the format is good, but I actually think that's not true. I think that's kind of a false narrative people tell themselves. Um, because whenever mid-range, like grindy jund mid-range is good, then that is just the best thing. And you can't do anything about it because the mid-range deck will beat the aggro deck and the mid-range deck will often beat the control deck as well because it's fast enough to beat the control deck. And now that the fact that aggro is actually fast enough to beat the mid-range decks, uh, then it means that control can pop up because uh, you basically just play survive, try to survive for the first four turns of the game, and then take over after that. So aggro has a small four-turn window about to try to kill you. And if they can't kill you, you win the game. Uh, I mean, it's not that black and white, but that's the idea. So... I think, in fact, the meta is getting very healthy now. Uh, you can try out new decks. There's a lot of things you can mess around with, things you can try out. Lots of new cards are getting tried out. I mean, we saw that Phyrexian Obliterator is getting played. We saw that, you know, the Kami War is getting played now. Uh, of course, Atraxa. Yeah, even some of the cards that were not good, Azusa's Many Journey, are coming in. Uh, what else we got? I mean, the Mardu... You know, Kaya, we said saw that a lot of decks are playing Kaya, this giant planeswalker, because it's just a really good value. And even if people get Traxa down, it's going to take over. Uh, it has life gain to help you with aggro, etc. So, uh, yeah, I think it just really opens up the planes to you can try a lot of new things and do well with it. So, very, very sweet. And uh, no spoilers, but I have a very sweet deck that I'm playing with right now that's doing very well for me. Um, yeah, I'm almost up to Mythic at this point. I mean, I uh, I went on a very good win streak, and uh, yeah, the deck is very sweet. So stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up probably Tuesday, something like that, maybe Wednesday. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for that. But let me know what you think about the meta. How are you feeling? Are you liking the ladder right now? Um, and let me know anything else that you think is uh, interesting or cool about the decks and the tournaments. Uh, but until next time, go out there, have some fun, and see ya.